Not only does JT Thor have one of the best names in the 2021 NBA draft, but now he is one of the fastest rising prospects. This is Florence Ceiling. Let's break him down. JT Thor was born in Nebraska to a family from South Sudan and moved to Alaska at the age of five. So how did we get from there to him being one of the fastest rising prospects in this year's draft? The answer to that is that Thor had a highly intriguing freshman season at Auburn. Thor quickly set himself apart as one of the best athletes in college hoops who could play above the rim, block shots, and stretch out to the three-point line. At around 6 foot 9, 203 pounds with a wingspan over 7 foot 3, Thor has the measurements of an NBA big, but it is his potential as a two-way spacer that makes him one of this year's sleeper picks. At Auburn, JT Thor was largely used offensively in one of two ways. Either he was relied on to play in the paint to catch and finish or play above the rim, or he was planted beyond the three-point line to space the floor for the Tigers. It's not like Auburn ran a lot of plays for Thor, but he did not need that in order to be productive. Thor is a tremendous athlete who moves a lot more like a wing than a big, but gets his head above the rim like the best of centers. This meant that Thor had legit gravity inside the paint that opponents had to watch out for. When he was not catching lobs, Thor still made his presence felt. With his bounce and length, Thor's usage can be kept fairly simple as a guy who lives close to the basket and leverages those tools to catch and finish. As a freshman, Thor made 61% of his shots at the rim, which is definitely an improvable figure. The flashes are there, but still, he has to get more comfortable finishing through contact more consistently. Like I said earlier, if Thor was not close to the basket, then he was out on the perimeter. 39% of Thor's shots came from beyond the arc, meaning that he took more three-pointers than any other type of shot. The appeal here is evident. Thor is 6'9 with really long arms and a quick, fluid release. He gets into his shot rapidly and does not have any significant complications with his mechanics. Auburn clearly trusted Thor to space the floor. At times, they even had him shoot off the move, rather than just spotting him up or having him catch and shoot. I fully believe that Thor's outside shots will translate to the NBA, and in time, he will be a reliable option as a stretch big. The soft touch is there, as evidenced also by his 74% mark from the free throw line, and he can shoot both quickly and with legit range. Thor's game against Kentucky might have been a glimpse into his future. Time and time again, Thor caught the ball from the perimeter and let it fly. He had the most success as a trailer against the Wildcats, but he finished with a career-high 5 of 6 triples. Still, for all of Thor's positive flashes from 3, the reality is that he only made 30% of his trays. Obviously, this percentage is not very good, but I go back to what I said about my belief in his mechanics, fluidity, and touch. However, the numbers will need to catch up to the potential, hopefully sooner rather than later. Thor only made more than 1-3 in 4 of his 27 games this season. He still needs improvement as a spot-up or catch-and-shoot threat, and as for creating his pull-up, that is pretty much a non-factor. More than 90% of Thor's threes were assisted. Thor's ultimate upside hinges on his shooting potential, so this is arguably his most important swing skill. Despite his quick release, I do feel like Thor can sometimes get a little rushed. Also, I am not too worried about this, but he does seem to take an extra moment to adjust the ball into his right pocket so he can shoot left. That might need to get cleaned up a little. Despite his numbers though, teams respected Thor as a legit floor spacer. Watch here as he gets fouled on the three. In terms of Thor's development path, the first road to him improving is clear to me. Since Thor is respected as an outside shooter, he needs to get better at putting the ball on the floor out of closeouts and making himself felt in that way. Right now, it seems like Thor is aware that he needs to do this, but he hasn't quite put it all together yet. He is not all that comfortable creating his own shot off the dribble, and when he slashes to the basket, he is not strong enough to get all the way there. Thor seemingly possesses all the tools, but he is still a raw ball of clay that needs to be molded. In the future, Thor will need to at least be able to do something off the catch in order to maximize his skill set. 
As I said earlier, either he needs to get stronger because his 203 pounds are too slight for an NBA big, or he needs to get into a little pull up off one or two dribbles once defenses run him off the three point line. This here against Tennessee is exactly what I want to see from Thor going forward. Additionally, it would also benefit Thor if he became much more sturdy in the post. Again, this goes back to his lack of strength. However, the only tool that Thor has in this part of his arsenal right now is this turnaround jumper. On paper, this is a great weapon to have. At his height and with his length, this shot is very difficult to block, but Thor cannot execute it at a good enough clip right now. He is still growing as a shooter, and beyond that, he lacks the capacity to constantly carve out space for himself down low. I've mentioned it a number of times now, but if shooting is the number one swing skill for Thor's potential, the second most urgent matter is getting his body up to scratch. Right now, his weak frame might even hurt him in terms of getting on the floor early on. But like most things with Thor, the flashes exist, and when you see them, they are pretty tasty. Another area that Thor was impactful in was rebounding, specifically his work on the offensive glass. With his height and bounce, Thor should really be posing constant questions on the offensive boards. He is quick getting off the floor and showed at Auburn that he can track the ball off a miss and get to it first. In his freshman season, Thor averaged over 1.5 offensive rebounds per game. He might be too skinny for this to translate 100% to the NBA early on, but Thor still has the advantage of his length and standing reach. With a wingspan of over 7 foot 3 and a standing reach of 9 foot 2, Thor has intrinsic advantages that many people just do not have. However, it is true that Thor still needs a lot of development in this area. At times, he can simply get overpowered. The game against Kentucky once again serves as a good example. Isaiah Jackson absolutely tormented Thor on the glass. He shoved him around and bullied him like it was nothing, ripping the ball away and getting valuable offensive rebounds. Something linked to this necessity to keep improving as a rebounder are Thor's hands. Frankly, I am a little concerned. To me, Thor's hands need work, and what I mean by that is that he is too prone to fumbling the ball or failing to secure it when his team needs that. Thor had over 1.5 offensive boards a night, but he got just a little over 3 defensive rebounds per game. Simply put, that is a bad number for a big. Thor really needs to get better at securing the ball and not letting it either slip away or be taken away from him. At times, it seems like this is harder than it should be for Thor, and at the NBA level, these types of mistakes are basically inexcusable. For instance, Thor does not hold onto this defensive rebound off the free throw miss and Tennessee get the ball back. Or here, he can't secure the offensive rebound against Kentucky and potentially leaves two points on the table. Thor's hands were not only slippery when it came to rebounds though. At times, he maybe fumbled the ball receiving a pass, and going forward, he will need to stop doing this. Not only can he concede rebounds, but Thor can also turn the ball over and give his opponent a clear fast break chance. Lastly, I also want to briefly address Thor's passing. This is not overly linked to his potential success, but Thor is not a playmaker by any means right now. He averaged under an assist per game, and for the most part, he honestly was not counted on to create for others. Still, Auburn's game against Florida sort of peeled back the curtain on this. Sharif Cooper missed the game, so he could not organize Auburn's offense. Thor committed 5 turnovers and, as you can see, was really sloppy taking care of the ball. On the defensive side of the basketball, we have to start with JT Thor's rim protection. Thor operates on a spring, able to quickly get up and down at the basket to help protect it for his team. In his freshman season at Auburn, Thor averaged almost a block and a half per game. His block percentage was the best out of anyone who played significant minutes. But even if Thor is not outright getting rejections, such as here, he is still making a difference. Thor's length allows him to regularly alter shots. It is tough to shoot over those arms, so just Thor reading the correct rotation and coming over is already impactful. Against Georgia, watch how Thor makes the attacker completely change his mind at the rim. Or here, BJ Boston has to get a ton of arc on his shot because Thor is there, but ends up airballing. Away from the rim, Thor has shown some impressive nimbleness. He is light on his feet and not at all uncomfortable guarding on the perimeter. When defending pick and rolls, Thor showed some impressive flashes. He is able to correctly play the balance between the roller and the passer, preventing both a clear pass or an easy dive to the basket, such as here when the possession ends in a block. 
I also liked seeing Thor's quick hands in action during his freshman year. Thor knows how to use his length effectively on the defensive end of the court. He can pester opponents with his long arms, such as when they post him up, and he can just tap the ball away. An example of that is here, as Thor outsmarts his rival. On top of that, Thor showed some impressive instincts in the passing lanes in at least a couple of games. This is something that intrigues me because it shows that Thor has that anticipation and feel for the game. He can read an errant pass and pounce on it, such as here, but this is not always a visible skill because he also has to protect the basket. Still, Thor cannot just fall back on this. A few times, he has gambled and been lucky to not have to pay for it. Watch here as Thor can't get the steal against Kentucky, but the Wildcats don't convert on the open three. Going back to how he does on the perimeter, I think that the reading on Thor's defense here is largely positive. With his mobility and length, Thor has the potential to be a switch defender. He can hold his own on the outside, getting down in a stance, moving laterally, and not letting his feet get caught in the sand. Watch here as Thor keeps up with Josh Primo from Alabama and ultimately forces the miss. Or, against Florida, Thor is on an island against Trey Mann. He stays with the drive without fouling and makes the final shot a lot tougher. This is what you want to see Thor do on the perimeter. If you combine his raw ability to space the floor offensively while protecting the rim and comfortably switching out on D, that is the type of prospect worth betting on. Another example of Thor's agility on defense is his capacity to keep up with plays in transition. Thor is a gazelle in the open court, able to cover lots of space with his long strides and stay with attackers that way. On more than one occasion this year, Thor came up with some big defensive moments in transition to help get stops for his team. For instance, watch here as Thor takes the bump in the open court but still blocks the shot at the basket. As for improvement points, the first thing is that Thor is still pretty green and at times a little naive. For instance, here with the sloppy closeout. Or, against Alabama, he does well to keep up with the drive at first, but then gets fooled by the upfake and fouls. Here against South Carolina, Thor is too eager to help at the rim and opens up the wide open three for the Gamecocks. This rawness can also be manifested in Thor falling asleep off the ball. Thor still has to do a better job at staying engaged during all of his minutes on the court. At times, he will get caught ball watching or just not totally dialed in. He is one of the youngest players in the draft, only turning 19 in August, so this flaw is not overly worrying just yet. Still, I hope that Thor can rev up his defensive motor once he makes it to the NBA. Thor can still be a little lazy or complacent at times. Instead, he needs to play with the same level of intensity and effort, always. For example, this is just lazy, as Thor does not try to contain his man off the dribble and just wraps his arms around him. Or here, it's just poor effort trying to stay in front of Isaiah Jackson. Speaking of which, watch here as Jackson overpowers Thor down low. As I have been saying, he will need to keep getting stronger and stronger, and this is something that I will be watching out for closely in the NBA. I think it is pretty clear why JT Thor is rapidly rising up draft boards. His combination of mobility, agility, elite athleticism, length, ability to hopefully stretch the floor, to play above the rim, all of that is obviously very appealing, but at the same time, I do think that there are some major improvement points for Thor. Part of it is that Thor is so young, like I said in the video, he will not turn 19 until August, but right now he is still very raw on both ends of the floor. To me, everything starts with his 3 point shooting. If he's able to get that to 36 or 37%, that will help him out massively because right now all we have are the flashes, and the numbers themselves are still quite poor. Then after that, like I said in the video, the path to improvement is pretty clear. Thor needs to number one, be able to do things out of closeouts, so be it getting all the way to the rim as he adds strength, or hopefully getting into those little pull-ups off one or two dribbles, but he desperately needs to be able to leverage his three-point shooting into something else. Hopefully in the future as well, we will see Thor being able to do a little bit of stuff in the post. I don't want him to become a bruiser or anything like that, but just getting some consistency with that turnaround jumper that we saw would be a great start. And then on defense, the biggest question are the hands. Because right now, Thor lets too many balls go by. But once he fixes that, I'm a believer in the package. I think that he has that versatility to be able to switch out on the perimeter. Obviously he can protect the rim using all of his length and standing reach 
but it's just a matter of getting locked in and playing with a high motor on a consistent basis. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think of JT Thor, and make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.